Big J's beef. Hey guys, it's me, Big J. Okay, so I kind of have to be really quiet. I'm in one of the conference rooms at work. I'm supposed to be working, but I've got a lot of beef I need to talk about. So I'm going to have to kind of keep it down a little bit. Okay, so today's beef is about a Star Trek, basically made for TV movie, Star Trek Insurrection. Now, to give you a little background why I want to talk about this, I recently rewatched G.I. Joe the movie for the first time in several years, and I noticed that that movie, compared to Transformers the movie, which were both kind of being uh, produced at the same time, Transformers the movie had upgraded graphics, animations, uh, great soundtrack. It really came off as a movie. I mean, for God's sakes, they had Star Trek's Leonard Nimoy voicing the um, main villain, Galvatron. So then you go to G.I. Joe the movie, and it was basically an hour and a half TV episode with no commercials. All the, like, everything was the same from the TV series. So that got me to thinking about, basically, Insurrection, in my opinion, is about a two-hour TNG episode with no commercials. So let's talk about that one today, because uh, many, many years ago, I read the original script for this movie. For Insurrection, it was supposed to be kind of good, sounded decent, but we're going to hear a little bit of that later. So let's get into it. So I've got here, I even had to write down freaking notes so I wouldn't be rambling too much. That's how strongly I feel the beef is about this movie. Okay, so the original intention of this movie was to emulate the warm and funny Star Trek The Voyage Home, a heart of lightness after the darker material of Star Trek First Contact. Oh my God, really? Okay, so here's what happens. When you get a movie like Star Trek IV that, in my opinion, wasn't trying to be funny, but had a lot of humorous elements... So you take a movie like that, you force the humor to try to repeat what made that a good movie, and you end up getting a Star Trek V, The Final Frontier. So basically, Insurrection is like The Final Frontier. We had some humor in First Contact that was good, but it wasn't forced. It wasn't goofy. It wasn't... Scotty banging his head on a support beam in a Jeffers tube like it's a freaking, uh, I don't know. It's, it's like he's the coyote in a Roadrunner cartoon short. That's what it came off to as me. So what was the original script supposed to be? What was it like? Got it right here. I can tell you. So it started off in the Academy with Picard and a very close friend, which sounds like much closer than Jack Crusher, uh, Beverly Crusher's husband and uh, Wesley Crusher's dad. Um, so they're great friends, best friends. Flash forward to present day, or present day as it is in that movie. Uh, Picard is given a mission by Starfleet Command. His old friend is now a wanted man. He's been attacking ships in an unexplored region of space, and no one knows why. Okay, so and Picard has to track him down, and if necessary, kill him. So think about this. Think about your best friend, if you have a best friend, if you have any friends. Okay, but let's say you have a best friend. Uh, like I do. I got a best friend, uh, Ben. It's been we've been best friends over thirty years. So. If I were Picard and I was given a uh, command, given a mission to go hunt down my best friend and kill him if necessary, think about the, the character conflict, the personal conflict you would have with something like that. Would I be able to follow that order? I no, No, I would not be able to do that. There is a very huge internal struggle that could have happened, would have been good, but did we get that? No, of course not, because that makes sense. Why would we get that? Okay, so here's the next thing, another excerpt from what the original script was. 
Uh, so this version also had a promising space battle between the Enterprise and Romulan ships in the skies over a Federation colony. Two apparently epic Batleth fights between Worf and an antagonistic Romulan. Ooh. And Picard defending the ideals of the Federation on the floor of the Federation Council itself. Ooh. And an ending which left the future of his command as well as that of his crew somewhat unresolved. Wow, I bet you I've got your attention right now. This sounds like it would be a pretty good movie. Did we get that? Hell no. No, we did not. So here's why. You're wanting to know why didn't we get what sounded like, see right here, what sounds like would have been an awesome Star Trek movie instead of the uh, direct-to-DVD schlock that we got. So can you guess basically who messed up all of these good ideas? The cat among the pigeons then was Sir Patrick Stewart. Well, he wasn't a sir then. He was just Patrick Stewart. His response to this first stab of the script was that it had no surprises. It has no scale. It has little humor. And what it has is cliched and tired. It has no romance. It is not sexy. It breaks no new ground. It underuses our cast. It has little fun. It is dull. I think what dismays me most about the story is the dredging up of the Romulans, a race already unexciting in TNG as the bad guys. It is revisionist and backward looking in a most disappointing way. After the Borg, the Romulans, oh my. So rewrite, re, rewrites continued. Jeez, I can't talk today. Uh, so the rewrites continued. The Romulans were dropped. Okay, so, you know, Sir Patrick Stewart, great actor, basically grew up with him playing Captain Picard. A lot of respect for the man. But here's the thing. Hearing that he was the reason why we went from what would have been an awesome, compelling movie to the crap that we ended up getting... Like, uh, okay, it, it has little humor. Why would you try to be humorous with a Star Trek movie? Uh, under uses the cast, a little fun, it's dull. Uh, uh, all right, so we ended up getting exactly what you complained about. So, and, and that's my beef. We could have had a good movie, but no, we, we didn't. And uh, so, so, and here's here's the last point here. The widely held perception of Insurrection as an extended episode of the series seems to have originated with Patrick Stewart's thoughts on the script during its latter drafts, as did the film's Gilbert and Sullivan sequence, with the great Shakespearean actor feeling that a series of King Lear references weren't working. Oh, boy. All right. Well, and the, the other part was... Brett Spiner had some reservations about the script for this movie. If you read between the lines, in my opinion, that means Patrick Stewart and Brent Spiner wanted to have ample, ample screen time in this movie and basically make it about them, those two characters primarily. Didn't we get that in First Contact? Wasn't that kind of really heavy on Picard and Data? But, you know, and that's the problem is you get yourself in a position where a couple of your actors can basically dictate and shape where a movie goes. Now, do you think if Gates McFadden or Michael Dorn had a problem with the script that their input would have been listened to? Hell no. But what happened is you have two of your main, main cast members. If they don't like it, well... You're going to have to change it, basically, for them. And here's the other beef that I've got. Why not go into a movie, making a Star Trek movie, and not try to go back and emulate one from the past? Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. That is brought up as the... That's the gold standard. That's the gold standard of Star Trek movies. And there's always been this desire to recapture the flame from that one or the voyage home. Now with Wrath of Khan, I've seen it dozens of times. I can't think of any humorous 
moment in that movie. None. Uh, so it doesn't have to be funny to be interesting and be compelling. You just have to have good story writing. And when you have your main cast member say that it, it has no romance, it's not sexy, it breaks no new ground, et cetera, et cetera. So then you write for that. You're, this movie was written to make Patrick Stewart happy. And everything that he thought it needed to have is what was in what we ended up getting in Insurrection, which was, I mean, that was bad. It was bad. It was horrible. And Insurrection is the Star Trek V, the final frontier of TNG movies. It's what happens when you go back and you look at, we can either emulate something from Wrath of Khan and redo that, or we can do the voyage home and try to redo that as well. And that's the problem is come up with something original. You're not going to redo wrath of Khan. That first contact was pretty dang on close. I mean, that is right up there with that. I think they got lucky on that one. Stop trying to do wrath of Khan again. And don't even get me started on star Trek into darkness. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No, no, I'm not going to go there. That's, that's going to be a whole different serving of beef. Uh, so there was nothing original, really, that, that happened here. It was another attempt of repeating good Star Trek movies. And Star Trek Insurrection was basically a Patrick Stewart production and panhandled story. What the fuck? Hey, where's the thief? We are Beyond Trek Podcast. Lower your inhibitions and surrender your years. We will add inspirational and hilarious Trek content to your day. Your attention will adapt to subscribe to us. Resistance is futile.